this is going to be an interesting comparison because there are two things to consider. Price and tone. Because both of those aspects will be crucial in making a decision between these two microphones. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be comparing two condenser microphones. Technically speaking, they're both budget microphones because when you look at the prices of microphones, they get pretty high. So these, on the whole grand scheme of things, are budget. One is more budget than the other, but the AT4040, one of my favorite condenser microphones, probably my favorite condenser microphone under $500, I would probably say at $300 being the price tag. And then we have the Sterling SP150, a newer microphone in my mic bag. And it's a microphone that I wasn't planning on getting. It was a microphone that I just saw. It was a little bit cheaper and I was like, eh, sure, why not? Let's cover it. And I had the extra cash to actually cover it. And I got the bundle with the SP... 130, which is a small diaphragm condenser, which I plan on covering eventually. Comparisons and all stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that. And if you are interested in stuff like that, consider subscribing. So without any further ado, let's talk about the builds. Both of these microphones have pretty sturdy builds. Uh, we will be doing a tap test. So I'll tap the stand and the mounts and everything in the booth. We'll be doing a plosive test, which ties into the build of the microphones in the booth. So if you're interested in something like that, the booth section will have it. But when you feel these microphones, they feel sturdy. As far as the grills are concerned, which is a big part of the build, the AT4040 is more sturdy, but I have a dent in it. I dropped it sometime a long ago when I bought it. And it doesn't affect the performance of it. It's just annoying that it has a dent in it. That's just the way it is. But if I was to give a grade or like pick a winner between the builds, I would probably lean towards the AD4040, but it's a lot closer than you might think. Because when you feel the SP150, it's a sturdy microphone. But let's see if that tap test in the booth will change my mind so next up i'm going to leave up a comparison of the tech and specs that go into these microphones and then we're going to do a noise test and an off-axis test All right, so you may have heard the fan on my computer, uh, some maybe some stuff in the pipes or whatever it is. Those things come up. I did boost at 10 decibels, so keep that in mind when you're making your evaluation of these mics. Now, I have been talking about two, three inches away from the fronts of the microphones. I'm going to back up, do a distance test, and then all around. All right, so we're two to three feet away from the fronts of the microphones. This is what it's going to sound like in my studio here. Uh, mildly treated, a lot of soft surfaces hanging and stuff like that. So that certainly helps. Uh, it's a long room. It's not a per it's a rectangular room, not a square room. And there goes the uh, mini fridge. If you're interested in how that may sound with me talking, and I don't know if you have a mini fridge in your room. Turn it off when you're doing stuff like that, but I'm going to leave it on because I want to be authentic with what other things in a room does do to these microphones. Okay, next up, 90 degree test about two feet away from the AT4040. And this is what it's going to sound like in the studio here. The mini fridge is still going on. I could turn it off, but you listened to it before without the mini fridge, so you know what it is. And stuff like that happens for people with a home studio you're definitely dealing with outside noise that sometimes you can't be in control of, but in a mini fridge situation, you can control that. Next up, 90 degree test on the Sterling side, stage right. I get my stage right and left confused sometimes because I'm 
a dum dum, and I should know it better because I work in stage stuff and crew and stuff like that. I really should know my stuff better, but I get confused. I have dumb moments, like most of us. We're only human. So now 180 degrees is next. All right, about two feet away from the rears of the microphones, these are cardioid polar patterns. And this is what it's gonna sound like in the studio here. The reflection back off the wall from behind the camera shouldn't be that big of an issue because there's a lot of stuff on it. And it shouldn't have a direct line of sight for reflections. There might be a little bit of echo, but not much. The major stuff that I'm worried about is my voice going towards the back of the microphone and how much of that it picks up. So let me know what you think down in the comments if you even heard anything I said. All right, let's go to the booth. We're going to do all those tests I talked about, tap test, plosive test, and be in a more controlled environment. I'm not going to say it's a perfect environment, but it's more controlled because I roll down the walls with uh, sound blankets and moving blankets and stuff like that. Uh, not much reflection. It's a decent size, so you're not going to be feeling like you're in a broom closet, but it is soft surfaces. Uh, maybe you might hear some stuff around the house, but that's only what I can do or what I got. Okay, take number three in the booth. 4040 SP 150. If you've known what I've gone through over the last like 20 minutes of recording, you'll know that I'm stupid. I don't know which is the front of the microphone with the Sterling at least. And uh, yeah, so kind of dumb. I don't remember the second time what I was dumb about, but I was dumb. So now let's listen to these microphones. Well, I am right now, and you are when this is out. Uh, let's see what I think about these. I'm listening to the Sterling right now. Oh, I remember what I was wrong on the second one. Uh, I was uh, listening to the wrong mic and talking about it weird. Whatever. So, listening to the Sterling right now, I noticed that it has that like bit of nasal tone to it but that's okay because i have a bit of a nasally voice right now because i'm kind of a little congested not too much but a little bit so if you're someone who deals with congestion this is a good example i only have my own voice so this is only what i'm able to give you so yeah it's got a, a mid tone to it a little bit more on the high mids there and not a lot of low end i mean it has a little bit of low end but not a lot but uh, I, I like it. It's a nice s neutral tone. I don't want to say smooth. I want to say neutral. Now on the 4040, you get more of that low end there. The low end is definitely more prominent in the 4040. It's known for being a darker microphone, a lower, bassier. Well, I don't want to say bassier because it's not that low, but it's kind of like a low, mid, and low kind of sound. So something to consider with these mics is... What is the application? What is your style? What is your personal preference? Because when it comes to these budget microphones, now with the Sterling being a very budget microphone and relatively speaking, the AT4040 is a budget microphone because you've got tons of microphones, well over 500,000, couple thousand. You gotta consider what is your tone? What is gonna complement your voice? more. Me personally, I like the 4040 more. I like the way I sound on it. I like the way that it emphasizes and it emphasizes what I like about my voice and then it also takes away what I don't like. There's still a hint of that, but with EQ you can always fix it. With the Sterling, there's a little more work to be done on the back end. And that could be because of the tone. I could say that with the Lewitt that I cover, the LCT240 Pro, that's a microphone that has good sound. But to make it sound the way I want it with my voice, I got to give it some love on the back end. The 4040, on the other hand, is something that I like the tone naturally, and it just needs a little bit of love. Now, back to the Sterling. Really, the only thing I'm noticing is that the low end is not as prominent. And this could be a personal preference. Let me know down in the comments what 
in, put in the comment section, put what section it's in. So right booth in the booth I noticed or in the booth I liked or whatever it is. Let me know what you think the difference is between these mics. Is it the fact that the Sterling doesn't have that low end emphasized as much and it's pretty much the same all around? Or is it the fact that the Sterling is just a step lower than the 4040? Now let's move on to a plosive test. We're going to do Bear Grills. He shows up occasionally and with the pop filter. Neither one are great with plosive rejection, but that's why I use a pop screen. And one more test. I know it's not really fair because this has a shock mount and this does not. But just for consistency's sake, let's do a tap test. And consider the fact that one has a shock mount and one doesn't. I apologize. I don't have the shock mount for this. And this didn't come with a uh, hard mount, like a solid mount. So the 4040 first. There you go. There you go. There's a tap test. Finally got a good take on the booth. Let me know down in the comments which one you like better. And let's head to the untreated room where it's not as nice acoustically. All right, so untreated room. This is my bedroom. This is not really a environment that is too kind to audio recording, but uh, it's something to consider when you're buying microphones because most people at home that are using these microphones, these budget microphones, are going to be in scenarios like this. They'll be in their bedroom where that's the only space that I have, and that's understandable. Uh, moving blankets and blankets certainly help, but it only does so much. So I'm just keeping things as genuine as I can, as more relatable as I can. I got a little area rug underneath me. I have my bed. But other than that, there's not many soft surfaces. There's the window there, which is a reflective surface. There's the hallway here that has echo coming back. So... Keep this all in mind when you're listening to the audio samples that I'm giving you for this. With this room, it is about, I guess, 8 by like 15 or so in dimension. So if you have a room that's similar, uh, I have a more rectangular room as opposed to a person who may have a square room, which could be an issue. Um, I'm closer to the wall here. That wall back there is pretty far away. I'm about three feet away and yeah, maybe like yeah about three feet away from that wall behind the camera and about I guess that would be 12 or so feet maybe I don't know I'm doing rough math here I'm not busting out a ruler for this so also I'm trying to give you some audio samples <laughs> so now we're going to do a distance test and off axis to see how these things are with a untreated room all right so about like, I don't know, six feet away or so, maybe five feet. This is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room. Uh, reflective surfaces all around, especially the ceiling. Most importantly, the ceiling. There's a wood floor and some area rugs underneath. So keep that in mind if it's relatable. I keep bringing this stuff up just to see if you guys have something that's similar. So this cabinet here, or not cabinet, but shelving shelves uh is got a lot of stuff on it it's not super reflective but something to consider as well uh windows especially because i bring that up a lot because there's stuff outside there's noises outside and it is glass it's a flat pane glass so reflections back all right 90 degree test on the at4040 side about two feet away this was going to sound like in the untreated room I have the door open right now, which you probably would have it closed if you were recording something. But I left it open just because, I don't know, you have variety and stuff like that. If you want any more examples, let me know down in the comments. Now, on the Sterling side, 
This is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room, speaking towards the window, which could be reflective coming back. And this is what it's going to sound like. Uh, I am running out of things to say because there's not much to say. There's just, just words are tough. And I try to be like genuine with uh, just saying dialogue, like not saying dialogue, but like having a conversation based audio sample rather than just reading something. And uh, yeah, sure. You'd be like, oh, well, it's not consistent. Oh, uh, well, audio and your uh, recording something or voiceover is not usually consistent. Yeah, if you're reading a script or if you're singing a song, it is consistent. But for a lot of people in these scenarios, they're probably not going to be too consistent. Like if you're a rapper or whatever it is, uh, there are di there is dialogue that is consistent, but a lot of freestyle like is not consistent. So keep that in mind. That, that's just my own uh, personal uh, way of doing things. But if you want something different, if you want small audio samples in different environments, let me know. Lastly, 180 degrees. I'm a little closer for this one. I want to do, I redid the distance, so I'm just going to do a closer one for the 180 in the untreated room. This is what it's going to sound like closer to the wall here behind the camera. And there's area behind me, open door, and all that stuff. Area rug underneath me, bed as well for soft surfaces. All right, that's it. Let's go to the studio and do a little bit of an outro after I listen to all these samples. All right, so if you watched my comparison between the Sterling and the LCT240 Pro, you noticed that, well, the microphone was closer to my mouth, that the preference is what matters. And I said that at the beginning of this video. With a lot of these microphones, it, it just seems like they're all solid options. I mean, of course, there are bad microphones out there, and there are great microphones out there, but when it comes to these budget options, it really comes down to which one is your preferred sound and which one fits your style, fits what you're looking for, fits every aspect of your recording process. Back to this microphone, we I, I noticed that it's just that much better. But when you consider the price being a third of the price, the Sterling definitely holds its own. So let's go into the notes and see how I felt after listening to it in post, because it's a different listening experience. So in the studio, it was very close, more low end on the 4040, more neutral on the Sterling. So personal preference. The thing that I noticed with the Sterling is the fact that the distance tests were very good. So it had a better uh, sound when it came to like reflections back and a distance back, at least in my opinion. I, I thought it sounded better in the Lewitt test and in the 4040 test, the comparisons there. So let me know what you think down in the comments and obviously let me know what section you're talking about when you leave the comment. With the 90 degree test, I gave a slight edge to the 4040, not too much, but it could have been just my angle. It could have been the way that I was oriented a little closer to the 4040, a little closer to the Sterling. Could have been anything. But in my tests, I definitely preferred this. And lastly, the 180 was pretty much even. When it came to the booth and the tone, I felt like the I felt like the Sterling was a little bland, which can be considered neutral. I just feel that my personal preference got in the way. And it's not to say that the Sterling is a bad microphone. Bland doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means it doesn't have a lot of texture and tuning and stuff like that. It just needs a little help on the back end. With the AT4040, depending on your preference, like I keep saying, I'm going to sound like a broken record. This microphone is for someone who's looking for that low end, like nice presence in that. You, you hear it. You hear it right now. I'm not too far away. I'm about two, three inches, probably about like three inches away. And it's got that nice tone that I like. Not necessarily everyone loves it, but everyone's different. So consider that. Something that really stood out with the booth and the plosive test, the 
SP-150 was definitely better. And I don't know why. Because this is a solid microphone. But hey, you're going to use a pop filter regardless. So take that information however you want. Now lastly, the untreated room. Uh, the tone was pretty much even as far as like when I'm speaking into it and the noise around it. The way that the acoustics bounce back to the microphone while you're speaking into the microphone at a close proximity. Then when it came to the off axis, I like the SP-150 a little bit better on the distance for some reason. It just it was consistent throughout all my tests and all the comparisons that I did. So there's something to be said about that. And as the mini fridge goes on, and I apologize, but I'm just keeping things uh, pretty transparent, just letting you know. A uh, fan on the computer has been going on too, but I'm not going to be... It's too much going on. Uh, you're probably not going to hear much, but if I tell you and uh, you notice it, just know that maybe turn off your computer and turn off a fridge or background noise. Uh, lastly, the 90 degrees and the 180 are pretty much even, at least in the untreated room. Uh... Condenser microphones, definitely not the best option for a quote unquote untreated room. You probably want to have something like you could see a little bit of moving blankets or sound blankets, depending on how much you want to spend. You could get some decent stuff uh, to just throw up on the walls or whatever it is or hang them. Uh, I usually hang them like these are the booth walls that I have. So consider that as an option to treat a room. Flat walls, uh, especially parallel flat walls and wood floors, reflective surfaces. Try to get those a little less crazy. Area rugs certainly help. Um, and moving blankets are the cheaper option of the two. Sound blankets can get a little expensive. Now with my final thoughts. It was close. And it came down to personal preference. The AT4040, like I said, is one of my favorite microphones. Probably my favorite microphone under $500. And this is just the way that you want to think about it. Think about it as, what can I afford first? Because these microphones are great. Regardless of the fact that one is $100 and one is $300. These microphones can do the job. And unless you're in a studio recording some crazy high-end whatever you're probably not going to notice the difference especially if you're streaming with it if you're doing home recordings i mean i say i make this reference all the time billy eilish and phineas they they used an et 2020 for years and they got some great stuff out of it and like i said before a lot of these microphones you just get good quality it's just a matter of like, what are you applying it to? Don't blow the bank on something that you're not going to take full advantage of. And don't waste money on things that you're not going to, you're not going to really benefit from. Sometimes taking a lower budget or a lower quality microphone, which some people consider the Sterling, a lower quality microphone could benefit you on the, in the long run with learning how to post-process, learning how to work with something less to make yourself better in overall. But that's just how I feel. I mean, I've used high-end microphones. I've used low-end microphones. I've used all types of things. And I definitely feel that me using lower-end equipment made me a better uh, content creator, uh, boom operator, audio person, whatever you want to call it. I feel like all that stuff made me better. And it's nice to have those high-end things because there's less to worry about in certain aspects. At least uh, when I wait, when I cover my uh, 416, the Sennheiser, I know I pointed out that it just makes things a little easier to do the job. And when you're getting paid for a job, you want things as easy as possible with not as many hiccups. So keep that in mind. So that's all I got to say about these microphones. The AT4040 is my choice, personal preference, and a little bit of a bias, probably a lot of it, but let me know what you think down in the comments of this comparison. If you agree with me, if you don't, leave down in the comments uh, your opinions, uh, leave down certain sections. If you have a question about it, whatever it is, let me know. Um, all I ask is we just be nice. Let's have a conversation. And uh, the Discord is available as well if you're interested in having a more in-depth conversation. Uh, I can't always get to it because I just have it on my computer. I refuse to put it on my phone because 
uh, be distracted and that's just better for my mental health to not be as distracted. And if you like this video, please consider liking it and please consider subscribing if you like my vibe around here. And I'm done rambling. Thank you all for watching again and I will see you rebels in the next video.